Hi everyone. This video was recently sent to me via YouTube and the person was asking me to make a video on how to resize the window so that it wouldn't be chopped off at the top and bottom. Because as you can see from the video he sent me, that's currently the case. The window doesn't fit the monitor properly. Now there are a number of reasons why this can occur and in this video I'm going to outline them and the different ways of going about fixing the problem so it's more like a troubleshooting video than a one method how to video. Okay before I start this troubleshooting video I'd just like to say that this is only a troubleshooting video and not a definitive method. This problem often occurs on netbooks and the company usually issues an update as a fix in due course. But in the meantime, you can try these methods to try and fix the problem before the update comes out. However, sometimes it's not on netbooks and it is indeed on a normal laptop or computer. And if that's the case, hopefully these methods will work for you. Okay, the first thing to try is very simple to diagnose the problem. I'm going to use the computer window as an example, but any window will do. If you go to your keyboard and hold the Windows key, followed by the up arrow key, it should maximize the window to your monitor. Now, if you're still seeing the monitor being chopped off at the top and or bottom, then the simple positioning of the window isn't the problem, and it's probably more complex. So, if it is still chopped off, then the first thing I would try is to change your screen resolution. So, if you right-click anywhere on your desktop, and then select screen resolution from this menu, that will bring the screen resolution options up. Now if you have more than one monitor, make sure you have the correct one selected. To do this, click the identify button and then you'll see numbers on your monitors. So I know that this one is 2, so I'm going to click 2 to open those options. Then drop down the resolution box here and you'll get lots of selections of resolutions depending on your own monitor. Now ideally you should have the monitor's native resolution selected now if you don't know what the native resolution of your monitor is, it's quite easy to find out. If you're using a computer with a monitor, the product code of that monitor should be displayed somewhere on the monitor itself. So, for instance, on my one, I have a Flatron W2243S. So I would go straight to Google and write LG Flatron W2243S native resolution and you'll soon find a site that tells you it's optimal or native resolution. I can immediately see here mine is 1920 by 1080. However, if you have a laptop or netbook, there may not be a product code for the monitor because it's obviously built into the laptop. If that's the case, simply try writing your particular netbook edition. It will be on the back of your netbook or laptop. Type it in here, followed by native resolution, and you should be able to find it. Once you've done that, Check that that is the resolution that's selected in the options. Then click Apply and OK. Once again, try the Windows up and see if the problem is fixed. If it is not, then I would once again go into Screen Resolution and simply go down the list. Try every single one and follow it up by clicking Apply, OK and Windows up on a window to see if it fixes it you may simply be able to find the optimal resolution for your particular size and window size and that may fix it for you. However, there are also rare occasions where your native resolution won't be displayed in this list and that is indeed what happened to me when I first built my computer and put this monitor to it. Now the reason for that is usually because you haven't got your graphics drivers updated. Now this is a convenient time to do this as simply updating the graphics drivers may fix your window problem as well. So this is definitely the next step we should go to for troubleshooting. Now to do that, we first need to find out the graphics card that we have installed in our machine. Now it's relatively easy to do that. I use a program called CPUZ or CPUID, they're the same program. I'm going to show you how to install that program now and then find out the model of your graphics card. So open your web browser, then go to this website, the link will be in the description box below, and click the download link on the side. There may be a more recent version if you're watching this video at a later date. You will then be redirected to this page and simply click the big download now button. 
Then click save. It's quite a small download, so it shouldn't take too long. Then click the file to run it, and click run if any security warnings appear. The installer should then appear. Click next. Put a dot in the radio button to accept the agreement, and then click next again. The default location is fine unless you'd like to change it. Next, 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 and install. Uncheck this box, and then click finish. You can then close your web browser, and you can then click the shortcut to run the program. Once you've got the program open, go to the graphics tab at the top, and your graphics card make and model number should be listed in the name box. Once you've got this information, go to Google and type in that model and model number as listed here. So Radeon HD 6970 followed by drivers. Find the correct site. The official one is always best if they have a download available. For instance, for my graphics card, I would then go to find a driver. I'd go through my categories, desktop graphics, product line, Radeon HD series, product model, the 6XXX series. Operating system, I would be Windows 7 64-bit. So this is just the kind of thing you'd be filling out. All graphics cards are different, of course, though, and all their sites work differently. And I would then simply click download, it would be an executable file, and I would run and install that file, and the drivers would be updated as needed. After doing that, I would then restart my computer, just to make sure. I would log on again, right-click my desktop, choose screen resolution, and hopefully the native resolution of your monitor, or laptop or netbook, should then be displayed here. If it's still not, then the only thing that's probably stopping it is the graphics card setting. When I previously ran across this problem of not being able to select the native resolution, I had to go to my graphics controller down here, right click it, go to the Catalyst Control Center. I then had to go to my VGA displays and after some time I eventually found out to go to properties and then set the maximum resolution to my native resolution. As you can see, that's what it's currently set to. I then have to click Apply, close the window, and I would then have to right-click it again on 1 here, set desktop area to the resolution necessary. As you can see, that's the one currently selected. And after doing that, I could then see my screen resolution here after restarting my computer. So Windows can get a bit confused with this when the graphics card is trying to control it instead of Windows, so you have to keep them both with the correct settings. So hopefully if you're having trouble getting the native resolution to be displayed here, that quick troubleshooting guide allowed you to get your native resolution. Now once you've done that, once again we can try the Windows Up technique and see if that's fixed it. After updating the graphics driver, trying the native resolution and all other resolutions, and hopefully your window will now fit your monitor properly once you find the best resolution for your particular monitor, which may not necessarily be the native resolution in some rare cases. However, even after trying all this, if you still can't get your windows to fit properly on your monitor, there is one last thing that you can try that I can think of, and that is updating your monitor's drivers. Now if you're on a laptop or netbook, this is unlikely to be the case as they're usually pre-installed properly and updated correctly. However, it's still worth trying. Now this is once again easier to do on a desktop because on your monitor will be your product code. Once again, just like before, I put that into Google and I'd stick drivers at the end of the search. Now my particular monitor, I remember, was quite hard to find drivers but I did eventually find them after quite a lot of searching. But once again, if you're on a netbook or laptop, put in the make of that computer and hopefully you'll be able to find those drivers. If you can't, the other way of updating them, which sometimes works, is to go to the device manager. And to do that, go to start, control panel, and then click device manager. 
making sure that you're viewing by large icons. You can then expand monitors and update any of the drivers listed here by right clicking them individually and clicking update driver software. You can then click search automatically for updated driver software. It will search the internet and if there is an update available it will hopefully find it and install it for you. This is the best bet if you've got a netbook or laptop. If it's already up to date like mine you will get this notification here. So that's all my methods of troubleshooting this problem. If I think of more I may make a second video to the series or I may just add some things to the description box if I think of small things that you can try. Hopefully this works for you but as I said it may not, it is only troubleshooting and it's difficult to make a universal video for this problem when each monitor is different. Feel free to like, comment, favourite and share this video if you found it useful. Thanks for watching.